Let's start by defining what we mean by production. In an infrastructure context, we call the parts of the infrastructure where a certain service is executed and served to its users production. If you host a website, the servers that deliver the website content to the users are the production servers. Inside your company, the servers that validate users' passwords are the production authentication servers. You get the idea. So let's say you need to make an important change in your production infrastructure. It could be adding a new service, changing the configuration of an existing service, updating the operating system, or maybe shutting down the service that's currently running. How do you go about doing that? The key to safely making these changes is to always run them through a test environment first. The test environment is usually a virtual machine running the same configuration as a production environment, but it isn't actually serving any users of the service. This way, if there's a problem when deploying the change, you'll be able to fix it without the user seeing it. If you're in charge of an important service that you need to keep running during a configuration change, we recommend that you have a secondary or a standby machine. This machine will be exactly the same as a production machine, but won't receive any traffic from actual users until you enable it to do so. In this case, once you've tested your changes in the test environment and are ready to deploy them to production, first, apply the changes to the secondary machine. Once the changes have been applied, make the standby machine and primary machine, and then apply the changes to the other machine. For even bigger services, when you have lots of servers providing the service, you may want to have canaries. Similar to the canary coal miners carry to detect toxic gases when entering the mines, you'll use a small group of servers to detect any potential issues in the larger changes you want to push out in the system. Once you verify that it works correctly on those machines, you then deploy the change to the rest of the fleet. That way, if there's an issue with the change, only a subset of the users get exposed to it. You can roll it back before it hits everyone. Now, let's say you need to make a minor change in your production infrastructure. Should you just go ahead and make the change in production? No, you should always try it in your test infrastructure first. It doesn't matter how minor the change may seem, there's always something that could go wrong. Whether the infrastructure needs primary and secondary machines or a group of canaries depends on how big the service is and how important it is that it doesn't go down. Even for the smaller services, you should never make changes directly in production. Always use a test instance first and only deploy the change to production after verifying that it works. We've mentioned before that you should always test your changes before deploying. Document what you do and have a way to revert to the previous state. The amount of time and effort you invest in each of these steps depends on the risk involved. You should always have a test instance for trying out changes but it might not be worth having a secondary server if nobody cares about downtime. So how do you decide how much time and effort to invest? We can assess the risk involved by considering how important the service is to the infrastructure and how many users would be impacted if the service went down. Certain services are mission critical. If the centralized authentication system is down, no one will ever be able to log in. If the billing system is unreachable, the company won't be able to receive payments. If your backups are lost, you have no safeguards in the event of a disaster. But not all services are mission critical. An informational website isn't as critical as an e-commerce site. An internal ticket system isn't as critical as an external customer support application. The infrastructure needed for a new installation isn't as critical as the one used for logging into existing machines. In general, the more users your service reaches, the more you'll want to ensure that changes aren't disruptive. The more important your service is to your company's operations, the more your work to keep the service up. You may have a user agreement about the expectation of a service availability. For example, in lots of companies, disruptive maintenance is performed on the weekend. In these cases, it's agreed that it's fine if the main file server is down on Saturday while you make any changes. You can also use these criteria to establish priorities for fixing a problem. If the problem is preventing people from doing their work, finding a solution to it should have a higher priority than solving a minor annoyance that can be worked around.